Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the one annoying E.D. the Trouble Child, and you're watching Trouble Child TV. This is an exciting episode because of what I'll be reviewing today. What is it, you may ask? Why Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U, of course. The fourth installment of the insanely legendary Nintendo franchise, also available on the Nintendo 3DS, is one of the most, if not the most, anticipated titles for the Nintendo Wii U. Announced at E3 2013, the announcement of the latest Smash Brothers has left a huge impression on fans of the series and gamers alike, myself included. There are even a few surprises in form of new characters. One being the super fighting robot himself, Mega Man. Newcomers also include the villager from the Animal Crossing series, Wii Fit Trainer from Wii Fit, Rosalina and Luna from Super Mario Galaxy, and Lil Mac from Punch Out. And that's just to name a few of many. And I do mean many. And joining Sonic the Hedgehog and Mega Man as third party reps are Shulk from Xenoblade Chronicles and Pac Man. I there's any doubt that he'll be in Smash Bros. considering, hmm, well, you know. Now, first things first. Graphics and presentation. The game itself is visually amazing, and compared to its last entry, Super Smash Bros. Brawl for, for the Wii, it's more vibrant and colorful. The stages and character models are surprisingly detailed, and it's just a marvel to look at. The gameplay is nearly the same as the previous iterations. For those who are new to the series, here's a brief lesson on Smash Bros. 101. You basically beat your opponent until the other player or CPU has enough damage to be knocked off the screen. Like the previous titles, items that appear in the battlefield and they can be used to your advantage. One item is a smash, it's a final smash ball, which allows the player to perform a unique final smash attack. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to the review. Compared to the last two installments, the speed and overall gameplay is between Melee and Brawl. The pace of this installment is simple, though some hardcore Smash players may disagree. But there is one thing that Brawl players will agree with though, the most notable change in the gameplay. No more tripping. Hallelujah! The roster consists of 51 playable characters, making it the largest Smash Brothers roster to date which includes 17 new characters. Also, Mewtwo, a Smash Bros. Melee favorite, will be returning as DLC coming next year. However, there is a catch. In order to get and play as Mewtwo for free, you must be a member of Club Nintendo and register both the Wii U and 3DS version of Super Smash Bros. before March 15th of next year. Even with the biggest roster in the franchise's history, Sadly, some characters from Melee and Brawl did not make the cut in the latest Smash Brothers, which upset a lot of diehard fans. But hey, if Mewtwo can return as a soon-to-be-released DLC character, I say never say never. However, despite the large roster, it has been a center of controversy for some time. While characters like the Wii Fit Trainer, Olimar, and Bowser Jr. have alternate character skins, the biggest controversy with the roster is the inclusion of several clone characters. Contrary to most rest that I've heard, I find that some of the clones have alternate attacks and balanced characteristics that separates them from their quote unquote regular counterparts. Personally, I have no complaints about the roster whatsoever. Probably the best thing about Smash Bros. for Wii U is the controller options. Now I have to give Nintendo, the development team, and director Masahiro Sakurai credit where it's definitely due. With caring to longtime fans of the series, mainly those who play Super Smash Bros. Melee for the GameCube, the development team did the most obvious thing, controller compatibility. Not only you can play the Wii U Smash Bros. with the gamepad, Wii Remote and Wii Remote with Nunchuck, it's also compatible with the Wii Classic Controller, Wii Classic Controller Pro, the Wii U Pro Controller, the GameCube Controller, and a Nintendo 3DS with the 3DS version 
of Super Smash Brothers. Playing with the Wii Retro and Nunchuck is about the same as Blah, which I suck at. I don't find playing on the Gink Pad difficult at the very least. The bonus and commands are simple, but moving with your character and performing attacks with the directional left arrow stick took some time to get used to. At the moment, if the movement was switched to the D-pad and the left analog stick was to taunt, it will be a lot simpler. I have yet to play with the other controllers because I don't have them. If I have the other controllers and decide to do a second review, I'll give the controller options a little more insight. There are several game modes that guarantee hours and hours of gameplay. Start with two of the most unique additions to Smash Brothers Wii U, the use of the Amiibo figures and Character Creator. For Character Creator, you can create a Mi and use it with the Mi Fighter, Gunner, or Sword command. The Amiibo, much like Skyliners and Disney Infinity, these character figures can be used to connect directly to the compatible games. With Smash Brothers Wii U, the character Amiibo can be used to train a computer control characters and put them in a match. Now you can customize the characters in-game, but also the Amiibo which will be level up to 50. And if I may add, you also customize uh, the characters in the game with, uh, with customized moves, stats, and, and they can be level up to level 50 as well. In addition to Classic Mode, All-Star Mode, Target Blast, Trophy Rush, and Home Run Contest, there are several modes and features that are exclusive to the Wii U version. Smash Tour Mode is a board game-like mode where players can use their Wii characters to collect character stat boosts while clashing with other characters or CPU Miis. There is also Event Mode, Special Smash where you can set up various rules for a Smash Battle, the self-explanatory stage builder and special orders where the player must undertake orders from the two final bosses, Master Hand and Crazy Hand, to earn rewards along the way. As much as I love the many modes in this game, Masterpieces, in my honest opinion, is pointless. I can understand the nostalgia of playing old Nintendo games even if it's for 1 to 4 minutes, mind you. We would be better off buying the full versions of those same games on the virtual console. There are some modes that were only exclusive to the 3DS version. Being that I only played the demo version at my local GameStop, I can't really get my insight on it. But still as large as the Wii U version is, it would have been awesome to have the same experience as its handheld counterpart. Still, there's one feature in the Wii U's version that brings the most excitement. Eight Player Smash this mode allows you to play up to 8 players at once. I was hyped when it was announced on the last Smash Bros. Direct for Nintendo. The Super Smash Bros. games, as popular as it is, is known to destroy friendships more than Uno. Now being that 8 player Smash is huge, it is restricted to larger stages like Big Battlefield, Windy Hillsong, Temple, and several others. The only major downside is that 8 player Smash cannot be played online. While on the subject of online mode, it has good net code. Though after a couple of online matches with a friend, I did experience some lag after the first three battles. Being that I have a wireless DSL connection, lag was not inevitable but not frequent. There are also special online smash modes for glory and for fun. And for glory mode, the player fights anonymously with other players without spotting items, deactivated customizations, and only on the Final Destination or Omega Form stages. A player win-loss record is also recorded. For Fun Mode, it's pretty much where everything goes on 4-player Smash free-for-all with items turned on, all stages except Final Destination are chosen at random and only wins are recorded. As far as in-game extras, the new Smash Brothers has plenty. Mostly unlockable trophies which I will get to in a second. Certain characters, stages, and modes can be unlocked when completing classic mode, events, and collecting a number of specific items. You can also unlock characters by taking part in a number of matches. There are also movies consisting of promotional trailers, 
unlockable character endings, quote unquote, when completing a classic mode run. And finally, for the completionists and in-game collectors out there, the trophies. These in-game collectibles are the largest in the franchise, totaling in at 716 trophies ranging from characters and items throughout Nintendo's gaming history and a handful of third-party ones. You might even find one of a character that is not in the roster but totally should. I'm looking at you Ubisoft. Trophies can be unlocked through Classic Mode, Trophy Rush, Event Mode, and Smash Tour. You can also purchase trophies at the Trophy Shop with in-game coins. Lastly, the music selection is enjoyable and very massive. I love the new main theme, which is appropriately entitled Multi-Man Smash. And there are several songs for each stage featuring original and remix versions of Nintendo music as well as a few third-party character tracks. Like Brawl, the, the stage music can be customized to how frequent each song is played when selecting the stage. The sound effects are a bit more cartoonish this time around, but, but it also complements the bright and colorful presentation. Though I haven't played Brawl in years, I can tell that some of the sound effects are slightly different, in which I don't mind. Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U is an awesome installment to an already awesome franchise. With many characters, modes, and customizations to choose from, with the insane replay value, you'll be playing this for hours, if not days. In addition to controller options, a player smash, in-game collectibles, and Mewtwo joined the battle as a future DLC character, coming next year, mind you. The new Super Smash Bros. is a near-perfect fighting-slash-party game. And I do mean near perfect. The gamepad controller is not recommended for beginners. Masterpiece mode is, un is an unnecessary mode. And unless you have the fastest internet connection possible, you will experience some lag occasionally when playing online. Despite the minor flaws, Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U is worth paying at full price. If you have a Wii U and don't have Super Smash Bros., shame on you. Got 60 bucks to spare? Buy it, play it, and love it. And believe me, it's worth getting a Wii U, period. And that's about does it for this episode. I am so sorry this episode took so long to make. Life outside of YouTube has been hectic, but hey, that's life. I hope you all enjoyed the first half of Season 3 of Tower Child TV. After the month of Tekken, I'll be taking a brief hiatus and making videos. And Tower Child TV will be back sometime in the spring of 2015. Until then, thanks for watching. This is the one knowing ED the Trouble Child. Keep it locked. Hey, what's up everybody? This is the one Noy ED, The Travel Child, and thanks for watching this edition of Travel Child TV. Catch up with some past episodes right here on the bottom. If you have questions about this episode, then check out the Ask the Travel Child annotation right here on this corner of the screen, and submit your questions or the comments there, and I will answer them. Be sure you rate and comment this video, and don't forget to subscribe to be the first to see the latest episode of Travel Child TV. Till next time, keep it locked.